All right, so welcome back to week eight. We will be covering chapter eight, which is working with lists and data frames in R. So quickly defining lists, a list is a group of data stored in a one dimensional set. It groups R objects together, can have varying data objects, and data is separated by a comma. So in the example to the right, we're storing different objects together. One is a numerical vector. One is a character string. So it's very easily able to go ahead and distinguish between the two and hold the information from both objects. So defining data frames. Data frames are two dimensional versions of a list where the data is stored in columns and rows most useful data structure in statistical analyses. As you progress through, through this class and other data analysis workshops or statistic classes, you will be using data frames across the grand majority of software applications to answer statistical questions or run analyses. It is just a very convenient uh, shape of the data that will allow it that will allow you to, to run multiple functions and manipulate the data in a very simple way since you know where they are since they're stored in columns. So creating lists, uh, that can be created by passing a set of data with the list function. Separate the values by using commas and ensure the data is syntactically correct. If not, R will throw an error. On the list on the side, or on the right, uh, we can pass numerous objects into a list. So keep in mind, you're not limited to just one type of data object. You can use many types and it will store all these values in the list. So working with lists, selecting values from lists can be done with a notation list object and an element in square brackets. You can select individual or multiple elements from a list. Uh, follows a similar notation as seen in previous chapters, where if you just want one, you can go ahead and start at that number. If you want multiple, you can go ahead and have the notation of start and stop with a colon in between. So adding, deleting, or updating lists can be done by, can be done to existing lists. Based off of the element of the list, merging lists can be done by passing them to a variable with C, list one and C2. So remember when, when I explained what that C means, you can, take, you can think of it as a concatenation, a cluster, or a collection of objects. So here we have on the right, we are going to pass the value green in the first element in list data and indigo in the second. So if we print out the first two elements, we're gonna see that green and indigo are now found within there. If you wanna go ahead and concatenate the two, we can take a look at list two and add that to the merged list. So essentially you're passing two list objects into one variable and it's going to contain the information from both lists. Working with data frames now, remember data frames are two-dimensional objects that are similar to how data would be seen on an Excel sheet. Uh, that's probably the easiest representation I can give you to how this is organized. Here, each column contains certain data of the same type, can make lists and other R objects into a data frame with the function data.frame function. So on the right, we are creating an object called cars df. Short annotation, cars data frame. We can check the class using the class function, check the type, it's a list. We have lists coming into it. And taking a look at the first five or six values here, we see that we are passing in empty cars miles per gallon and empty cars cylinders. This is gonna be what our data frame looks like. So one of the steps of processing data is to check the structure of the data. 
it is good habit to very early on in your analysis to check your data frame to ensure one it's the correct shape two you want to know there's missing values you want to be able to see what kind of values there are are you dealing with numerical are you dealing with categorical and this can be done with the function called uh, str or structure continuing our work with data frames extracting values of data frames can be done through selecting by row column or element Selecting by column follows the notation, the data frame name. You're going to have the dollar sign and then the column name. This is how you isolate independent columns from a data frame. If you want to extract rows, it's a little different. You're going to have the data frame name followed by the row you want or the column you want. And the example here on the right does both forms. So we check the structure of cars DF. We check that the first six values are present on each one and then taking away taking away cars df followed by the first row and the second column, we get the value of six, which makes perfect sense looking at the data just above that line. Continuing our work with subsetting. Extracting information from lists or data frames given in specific conditions. This can be achieved using the subset function on the data frame. You can apply functions to it such as max to get the largest value from a column. Uh, so think of it as your first step in subsetting the data itself and then having a function performed on that isolated data point, which is what we see here on the right. So extracting information from lists or data frames given a specific condition. Another way of doing this is subsetting lists can be done with the syntax of list, and you're gonna have two, two square brackets followed by the element you are currently looking for. Here the list contains one element, which is the data frame changed to a list. So on the right hand side, I use subset for a data frame, followed by the variable max from list, it's going to have cars list and you're pulling the second dimension from that list so you're pulling that first element uh, that we're looking for and following through with reading in files to create a data frame uh, sometimes you're not going to have native data objects or samples provided by R sometimes you're going to have to read in specific files that were provided to you or that you've gathered along your research. Reading in files from a CSV or a comma separated value or other formats can easily be done by native R commands. The read.csv function is able to read in a file into a data frame and column names are assumed by R. Read.table is another one that you can use. It reads in a file into a table format, but the column name is assumed to be a value of the data. On the right, we see the example of both of them. So read CSV has seen that example was the first line. It's going to assume that's going to be your column name. While read.table at the bottom, you see V1, that's going to be your default column name. And an example is assumed to be a part of your data set.